A few quick announcements, then we're going to get into the Word of God. Amen. Um, yesterday, I was privileged to do the Uganda teaching. Amen. At uh, 1 o'clock our time, and it was 8 o'clock their time at night in Uganda. We did the, uh, for those of you who don't know, we do a radio ministry through Zoom on Uganda once a month, to Uganda once a month, and I did a Bible teaching. Many people were calling in, and um, really, there's a revival going on there. It's so great to hear all the testimonies, all the great things that are going on. And we want to give God <clears throat> all the praise, honor, and the glory. We finance, by the way, this radio program. It's $100 for one hour, and uh, that's $100 per month because it goes on for one hour. And uh, it's well worth it. I'll tell you what. There are so many souls being saved there. People are getting delivered from witchcraft. Just recently, last, last week, as a matter of fact, somebody reached out to me from Uganda and um, they said, you know, they said, Pastor Craig, you don't know me, but I've been following you, uh, you know, live streaming and so forth. And they said, I would like to receive Jesus right now as my personal Lord and Savior. So we were voicemailing through, through the Facebook page and so forth. And I explained how to say the sinner's prayer. And she said, I, I just did that and I feel brand new. And she said, oh, by the way, I used to be a Muslim. And I left the Muslim faith as a result of listening to the radio program. So how many of you know God's doing tremendous things? Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> recently, she sent me a message. She might even be watching right now, as a matter of fact, in Uganda. But recently, she sent me a message that says, what does a Christian faith require? How does God want us to live? And I said, well, God wants us to live a holy life. He wants us to stay in his word, to study his word, to obey his word. The Bible says, be doers of the word, not just hearers only, deceiving our own selves. The Bible says to go to church. And this morning, she, she sent me a, mail, a, a, a voicemail. It says, I went to a Christian church for the first time. I feel so excited. Amen. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> so God is doing a great thing. You know, you may look around and say, oh, we're just a few people here at Changing Lives. But how many you know that's exactly what God is doing through this ministry is changing lives Amen. beyond these four walls. And we thank God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're here every Wednesday night for Bible study from 7 to 8 o'clock. We're going through the book of Psalms. It's been an exciting Bible study. I encourage you all to come on out. And also, um, this is good news. How many of you are getting water baptized? Raise your hand. Well, you're going to be baptized two weeks from today. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Two weeks from today, we're going to be doing a water baptismal. Um, we have a portable baptismal right here, and it really is, is a great little uh, water baptismal. Speaking of which, what I need to do is after the service concludes today, for any of you guys that have a lot of muscle, if you could help us move this baptismal into the backyard shed, we'd appreciate that because we have to get it, we have to set up and everything in a couple of weeks for the water baptismal. And in fact, I'm going to need help the day before, Saturday, August 20th, in order to fill it up and get it set up and get ready to go for Sunday morning. So we're looking forward to that, amen. I know some of you have said you want to get water baptized, and I know who you are. And if any of you others want to get water baptized, let me know before that day. Don't walk in and say, Pastor, I want to get water baptized, because how many of you know you got to bring the right clothing, the right change of clothing, and all that good stuff, and get some instruction concerning being water baptized, amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're looking forward to that. That's going to be an exciting, um, exciting event coming up. Praise God. And also August 28th, that is three weeks from today, we have our fellowship dinner coming up. August 28th, the last Sunday of the month, and we always have our fellowship dinners the last Sunday of each month. And also the weekend revival is coming up on September 18th through, uh, 16th through the 18th. I was just um, uh, talking to Brother Joe, and he's looking forward to it, and we said we're announcing it, and it's on our website, and we're really excited about the weekend revival coming up in September. That's coming up next month. Before you know it, it's going to be here. Amen. Praise God. Also, if you notice that during the offering time, there's a little box that's a little different up here, and it's called the Furnace Offerings Box, the Furnace Love Offerings. We're going to be getting a new furnace this month for the church. It's a commercial-sized furnace, and it's not, you know, it's not something we... I'd like to get a new furnace. It's an absolute necessity. The furnace we have now is 21 years old, and I don't know how, how many nights I could tell you last year during the winter, I was here all night long because the furnace once again broke down. I had to call plumbers, and, and you know, I mean, you know, plumbers really don't like to come out at 3 o'clock in the morning. And how I many you know, but they get paid to come out at 3 o'clock in the morning. I called one place that I couldn't believe it. They said, yeah, we can come on out. No problem, Pastor Craig. It's only $200 an hour, and we have a minimum two hours. I said, what if you don't fix it? They said, you still pay the money. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that went on and on and on. We, we, we just, it's time for a new furnace, and I believe that God's going to provide through each one of us and pay the loan back for the new furnace, and we have four different individuals coming in, licensed plumbers that are giving quotes right now, and we're going to hire one of them, and they're going to put it in in this month. So now we'll have good heat, 
Remember last year we did one service, we were in our jackets. We had no heat. I had plumbers here all night. They couldn't get that thing going. Amen. That was something else. But hopefully that doesn't happen anymore. Somebody say praise God. So that's what this offering box is for. If you feel led of the Lord to donate to it, by all means, please do. And uh, the church could really use that. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. At this time, children's church is dismissed. I didn't want to forget that again. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, children. You're going to go up with Sister Andrea. They're doing a great job in children's church. And praise God. We're uh, going to get into the Word of God. So let us stand to our feet, if you would, and let's turn in our Bibles to the book of James. That's in the New Testament, chapter 3 and verse 2. James chapter 3, verse 2. And as you're turning there, I want to ask you a question. How, have your, how has your words or your language been lately? How has your self-talk been? What kind of words are you saying to other people? That's what we're going to talk about today, controlling the tongue. Somebody say controlling the tongue. James uh, chapter 3, verse 2. I'm reading the New Living Translation version of the Bible this morning. The Bible says, We all make many mistakes, but those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. We've learned so much of the book of James so far. And Lord, I just pray that we would take a heart's inventory of what we're saying. Because, Lord, your word does teach that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the true us is really of what we say. And so, Lord, help us to observe our language, what we say, and even in our self-talk, how we talk to other people. Lord, uh, help us, Lord, to have good thoughts, to feed ourselves your word every day, Lord, to be praying. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that we never say words to hurt one another, that we're not gossiping against one another. That, Lord, you just have your perfect way and will in our hearts and lives. And we just thank you for that. Thank you for this teaching today about our tongue, about our words and what we say and how important they are. I pray that I would decrease Holy Spirit, increase in me, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. We mention each time, you know, this is part six of uh, the, as we go through the uh, book of James, and as we journey through it, it's really important that we understand that James was a half-brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He did not even believe that Jesus was the Son of God until after the resurrection of Jesus had happened. We learn that James was martyred in A.D. 62. He was believed to be stoned to death, as tradition says. The book of James is very insightful and interesting. The key word or theme is faith that works, and that's what we've been learning about, faith that works, amen? In review, we have learned faith and endurance, how it's very important to endure, especially now that we're living the last days. I believe that Jesus is going to come back any time. I'm not a date setter, and neither should any of us be a date setter, but we know the time is getting close, And how many know we've got to be diligent in our faith to have a closer and closer relationship with the Lord? We talked about asking God in faith for wisdom without doubting. We talked about not to trust in money, but to trust in God. We saw that God blesses people who patiently endure testing and that God never tempts people to sin, but does allow testing in our lives to strengthen us and allow our endurance to grow. Last week, uh, we were talking about, well, a couple of weeks ago, rather, we were talking about the importance of listening and doing. We must never be prejudiced against people, we learned. The book of James talked about faith without good deeds is dead. That was last week's message. And by the way, if you missed any of these messages, go to our YouTube channel, and you can catch up on those and see those. Today, we're going to be talking about controlling our tongue. In the future, we're going to be talking about true wisdom comes from God. Drawing close to God, like the song said this morning. How many of you know we got to draw close to God, and he'll draw close to us? Warning against judging others. The only person we should be judging is the one in the mirror. Somebody say amen. Warning about taking our lives for granted. We woke up this morning, and how many of you know that was a major blessing? How many of us thank God when we woke up and the alarm clock went off? I know I did, and I'm in the habit of doing that. I'm not patting myself on the back or anything, but I just thank God for another day of life. Many people didn't wake up today. They didn't have that privilege. Amen. And we should thank God for those things. Patience and suffering and being patient when waiting for the Lord's return. We're going to be talking about the power of prayer and finally restoring wandering believers. Those who have backslid away from the Lord. The book book of James talks about how to bring them back to the Lord again. Amen. And how many know there's a way to do that and a way not to do that? Amen. Praise God. Now, my question in the outset of this message is this. What have you been saying lately? What is your self-talk like? 
You know, some of us talk to ourselves as we're driving and that type of thing. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not weird if you talk to yourself. The Bible even says that King David talked to himself, amen, in the book of Psalms. So it's okay to talk to yourself, glory to God, amen. Just, just understand that, you know, you're not talking to somebody sitting there when they're really not sitting there. You're an invisible friend, whatever. Anyway, the case is, amen, it's okay to have self-talk, amen. What is that self-talk like? Is it positive? Is it negative? Have you been complaining or speaking words of thanksgiving to the Lord? How I many you know complaining doesn't get us anywhere? It really doesn't. We can complain about the heat today. Oh, it's so hot. I can't believe this. You know, I'll tell you what. You know, this is terrible. This is terrible. How I many you know we live in New England? This is normal. We go through droughts. We go through a time of no rain. But we can take it. We're tough. We're New Englanders. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can get through it. Because in the winter time, the complainer is going to say, I'm so cold. I can't believe this. I wish it was summer. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So how many of you know we have our seasons, and they go, and they come, and they go, and praise the Lord anyway. Amen. Praise God. Now, how many know, church, that, um, that, that really only a few words spoken in anger can destroy a relationship that took literally years to build? How many of us have known people, they have said something that without even thinking, and those words came out like a dagger to that recipient of hearing them? And they were so destructive. Even those words might have caused a divorce. They might have caused a, a son or a daughter running away. They, they might have caused all these different things. How many know we've got to be really careful what we say? What we believe is reflected in what we say. How many times do we talk about Jesus to people? How many times do we talk about what's going on or whatever the case is? So what we believe is reflected really in what we say. There's a big lie, and, and I know a lot of kids used to say this in, in school, especially in, gr in grade school. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I never have heard that before. Well, how I many you know that's a big lie? Words do hurt. Matter of fact, words sometimes hurt more than physical abuse. Now, I'm not suggesting either one, but how I many know words are powerful? The Bible tells us that, our, you know, the, the, that speech is the index of the heart, that what we say, that's who we really are. Another question we have to ask ourselves, do people want to be around us? Oh, when we come in the room, oh, there's so-and-so, oh, here we go, miss complaining, see you later, I don't want to deal with that person, amen? How many know we've got to say, okay, Lord, we want to say words of life, not words of death to people, amen? A measure of spiritual maturity is the believer's speech. James devoted a good portion of his letter to attacking a careless and corrupt tongue. He appealed, however... Not only for controlled tongues in verses 1 through 12 in James chapter 3, but he also uh, talked about controlled thoughts as we read on in James chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. The mouth is, after all, connected to the mind. Winsome speech demands a wise source. Both controlled talk and cultivated thought are necessary. Amen. We saw in part one of this series of messages through the book of James that James 1 and 26, we already talked about this, that anyone who says he is a Christian but doesn't control his sharp tongue is just fooling himself and his religion isn't worth much. So if we say we're Christians but yet we're talking like somebody that's not even a believer, then really we're not really walking with the Lord. We're deceived. We think somehow we got the name tag Christian, uh, we got the title, I'm a Christian, but yet we're not saying words and we're not living according to the Word of God. We talked last week that when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are definitely going to have different talk. We're going to talk differently. We're going to behave differently. We're not going to get involved with the sin we used to get involved with. We're going to be convicted concerning our sin, and we, we're going to start loving people more than we ever have. Amen. James 1.19, before that it said, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must, all, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Amen? You ever know why God gave us two ears and he only created one tongue? <laughs> Amen. He wants us to listen and not immediately respond. Amen? He wants us to listen and think through how we're going to respond, what we're going to say. How many times the couples that are married get into marital issues and problems when there's some sensitive issue on the table and one brings it up to the other one and suddenly they start sharing their thoughts and the other one immediately gets defensive, assumes I know where this is going and I don't want to feel bad so therefore they retort and they say something before the other even got their full thought out. How many of you know we got to fully listen, let the person totally speak and share what they're saying, and then we can think and respond? 
Somebody say glory to God. Amen. What you say determines what another sees. Our words paint pictures. Our words paint pictures of different things that we're saying and so forth. Amen? If I told you right now, um, in Salisbury Beach, there's probably a lot of people getting on the beach. It's a hot day. Their umbrellas are going up. But it's low tide. You have to walk way out in order to get into the water. And, you know, you, there's all these different seagulls and so forth. What are my words doing? They're painting a picture that you're picturing an ocean at Salisbury Beach through the words in which I'm saying. So the words that we say will paint pictures in people's hearts and minds. Spiritual maturity requires a tamed tongue. Proper speech is not only saying the right words at the right time, but it is also controlling your desire to say what you shouldn't. How many times will we grab our tongue and say, I'm not going to say that? And then we think about it later on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't say that. That would have been the wrong thing to say. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so many, sometimes we've got to bite our tongue, don't we? Amen. Praise God. What are some examples of an untamed tongue that the Bible talks about? Gossiping is one of them. What is a good definition of gossip, Pastor Craig? It is talking negatively about someone else without them being in your presence. I've always told people, don't talk negatively about other people unless, they're, unless you have the, the, the boldness to go to tell them what you're going to say yourself. Why spread, you know, gossiping and rumors and th things about that, amen? Rumors is another one that the Bible talks about. Idle talk about the affairs of others. Another, another untamed tongue is putting down other people. Bragging, in other words, ungodly bragging. Well, look at me, I got this and I got that and I'm so special and I'm so great. Being manipulative to control someone. How many of you know that there are some, a lot of manipulative people in the world today to try to control people, amen? Complaining. Complaining is a big one. When I, say, when I look at the word complaining, I, all I can think about is Exodus in the Bible. You know, Exodus, they're complaining. God, you know, they're, they're crying out to God in, in Egypt. They're like, Lord, you know, please deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. And these taskmasters, they're whipping us, and we're making all these bricks, and they're not even bringing our, our straw in order to make the bricks. We have to provide that for ourselves. And they're, 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 they're just crying out to God. Finally, God raises up Moses, and he uses Moses to deliver them through the Red Sea. And what are they doing? Several weeks later, they're complaining. I don't like the food you're giving us every day there, God, okay? I want some meat. I want some quail. You know, how many of you know complaining doesn't get us anywhere? As a matter of fact, what you say is the direction that God is going to send you in. So you can speak negative faith and complaining. I'll never add up to anything. And God's saying, you just said it. How about saying this? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How about this? I know it's hot today, but I know that God's going to cool it off later on in the week. I know we're having a drought right now, but God's going to make it rain, and we're going to be fine. Amen? How many of you know we've got to move forward in the name of Jesus and speak words of life instead of speaking words of death? Amen? And praise God. How about lying? How many of you know we shouldn't be lying to people? What about the use of profanity? Sometimes in today's gyms, you go in a, in a locker room, especially in the you know, men's locker room, all you hear is the F word. Every other word is the F word. You almost feel like stopping people and saying, can't you express yourself with another word than that? <laughs> Amen. Somebody say, how many of us as Christians, we shouldn't be swearing? We should not be using profanity. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 12 and 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I mean, if a person is always saying a lot of dirty jokes and dirty things, then their heart is dirty. They have to get it cleansed. They have to go to the Holy Spirit and say, I need a, I need a heart wash. <laughs> I need some heart surgery. <laughs> Amen? And God, please take this away from me. I don't want to speak this way anymore. I'm repelling people with these words. Amen? We want to speak words of life. Glory to God. A measure of spiritual maturity is a believer's speech. We must control our thoughts in order for our tongue to behave. Our minds are like computers, garbage in and garbage out. So therefore, we must screen what goes into our mind. Let me ask you some questions. What are you watching on TV or your computer or your cell phone? Somebody say amen. If we're feeding ourselves garbage, then garbage is going to be in our heart, and that's what we're going to be saying, that's what we're going to be thinking of, and we shouldn't be feeding upon garbage. Amen? Amen. Feed on the Word of God. Feed on worship music. Feed on, uh, you know, sermons and, and messages that you hear. Amen? What do we listen to on the radio? What kind of music do we listen to? What are you reading? Amen? How many you know even reading bad books is bad for you? Amen? Who do we have as friends? 
The Bible teaches that evil company corrupts good habits. Evil or a negative influence on our heart will make us be like that friend that we hang out with. We must allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with new attitudes and motives. Then your speech will be cleansed in its source. Always remember, the Bible teaches that no man can tame the tongue. And you and I might think, and, and when I first read that years ago, I said to myself, well, well in that case, I don't, I, we can never change. However, it didn't say God can't change the tongue. The Holy Spirit of God in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. What is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Pastor Craig? Simple. It's character changes that the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts as Christians. But we must submit to the Holy Spirit in order for him to change us. Do you follow what I mean? The Holy Spirit can change our heart. The Holy Spirit can change our character. He can change the words in which we say. So that's why we got to count on him. Amen. we got to say, okay, Lord, change my heart. I want to have love, joy, peace, long, uh, you know, uh, you know self-control. I want to have all these things in my life, patience and all those uh, goodness and all. But we've got to submit to the Holy Spirit of God and, 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 and allow him to change our character, which in essence will change our words. Two scriptures in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 29, it says, Don't use bad language. Say only what is good and helpful to those who, are, who you are talking to. And what will give them a blessing? Ephesians 5 and 4. Dirty stories, foul talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, remind each other of God's goodness and be thankful. Good words to change us, God works rather to change us from the inside out. When the Holy Spirit purifies a heart, he gives self-control to that person so that person will speak words that please God. Even the book of Proverbs, the Old Testament, chapter 13 and verse 3, the Bible says self-control means controlling the tongue. What is self-control? A good definition. Controlling the tongue. A quick retort can ruin everything, the Bible says. Now, let's go back to James chapter 3, reading verses 1 through 12, and let's see what it totally says here. Verse 1 says, dear brothers and sisters, and we know when, when the Bible says dear brothers and sisters, it's talking to Christians, it's not talking to non-believers. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged by God with greater strictness. Let me stop there for a minute. How many know that those of us who are teachers of God's word are going to be, have a stricter judgment on judgment day with the Lord? That's why if you notice, Pastor Craig, anytime you ever come hearing a sermon or a teaching, there's a lot of scriptures I use. I don't say, okay, let's have one little scripture, Jesus wept, and let's tell a bunch of stories and end the sermon. The reason why I do that, it's on purpose. I want God's word to declare what his word says without my opinion about it. In other words, you know, if God's saying something, I want God's word, this is where it says in the word of God. So a person comes up to me, Pastor Craig, I don't agree with what you said. That's your opinion. I say, wait a minute, read the Bible. I quoted what God said. It ain't my opinion, it's God's. So if you got a problem with that, you take it up with God because it's in his word. So the best thing a teacher can do in the word of God, no matter who you are as a teacher, you could be a lay person, a pastor, whoever you might be, a Sunday school teacher, is to use a lot of scripture. This is what God's word says about this issue. This is, this is, these are the scriptures in which he says, amen? It's not a matter of opinion. How many know it's a matter of God's word? Verse 2 says, and again, we said this before, we all make many mistakes, but those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. We can make a large horse turn around and go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. So also, the tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. A tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness that can ruin your whole life. It can turn the entire course of your life into a blazing flame of destruction. For it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is an uncontrollable evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it breaks out into curses against those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. 
Does a spring of water bubble out with, those, uh, with both fresh water and bitter water? Can you pick olives from a fig tree or figs from a grapevine? No, you can, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty pool. Amen? James gives analogies. You know, a huge ship is, is you know, the little rudder is what turns the boat in the direction in which it's going. He talks about all these different things given an analogy. And how many know it's, our tongue is a very small member of our bodies, but it can do huge, huge damage if we're not careful in what we say. Amen? I want to read the, um, the, uh, the, you know, in the Bible, the amplified version of the Bible concerning this to bring it out a little more. Verse 1 says again, Not many of you should become teachers, that is, serving in an official teaching capacity, my brothers and sisters. For you know that we, who are teachers, will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. Now, how many know you want a teacher to teach you the Word of God? You don't want a teacher to teach you anything that's error or anything that's against the Word of Almighty God. That's why I always encourage you, as a church, read the Bible every single day. There are many teachers on the radio. There are many teachers on, uh, you know, YouTube or the Internet. But how many you know, not all those teachers are necessarily teaching the Word of God. Somebody say amen. We have to know and understand that we got to stay in the Word. So if we hear a preacher or a teacher teaching something contrary to the Word of God in error, we'll pick up on it immediately and stop listening to that individual. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. So how many know we want the real deal? We want the real word of God. Amen. We want to talk about heaven. We also want to talk about how to avoid hell. We want to tell people the truth that you are going to live forever, that your soul and your spirit are going to live forever even after you die and you're six feet under in the grave. And the only place you're going to live forever for eternity is going to be either heaven or hell. It's your choice. We've got to tell people the truth. The only way to get to heaven, Jesus said, I am the way, exclusively, only one way to heaven. Amen? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. Now, if we start thinking intellectually, well, that's not fair. What about the people in India? What about those who believe that? What about those who believe that? Are you telling me they're all going to go to hell? Yes. Why do I say that? Because that's what Jesus Christ himself said. So how many of you know we're going to believe the Bible or we're not? Somebody say amen. We've got to believe what the Word of God teaches. The only way we're going to get to heaven, church, and people watching my live streaming and community television is going to be to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To say, Lord, you paid the price for my sins. I appreciate that. I thank you. I love you. I receive you. I invite you into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent from my sins, and I want to live the rest of my life for you. It's a changed life. It's a changed heart. In order for you to be born again, your spirit was dead, but now it becomes alive. Your spirit, man. So your connection with God is, is attached and say, through Christ, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Amen? How many you know it's all about Jesus? That's why we should praise him 24-7. Last night at 3.30 in the morning, I woke up, and I'm just thinking in my bed. How many of us have just woken up and stopped thinking about the things of God? That's what I was doing last night. So I woke up, and I'm thinking, and I'm saying, wow, God, you are so awesome. You have created all, you know, the universe. You've created the solar system. You've created the earth. You know every single thought that I'm thinking, every single thought that every human being on the face of this earth is thinking? Lord God in heaven, you deserve to be praised 24-7 by all of your creation. Not only human beings, but also animals and also trees and also mountains and everything else in your majesty. You deserve the praise, the honor, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Praise God. He is so awesome. This God we serve is a huge God. Sometimes we think of the devil. Well, the devil's right here, Pastor, and God's right there. Uh, ain't no way, Jose. The devil is way down there, zillions of miles away from the power of Almighty God. <laughs> Amen. You and I have to be soldiers of the cross. we got to come against the devil and not put up with any of his garbage. If he comes looking for you, you bind and rebuke him in the name of Jesus and all of his works and everything that he's doing and get him out of your life in the name of Jesus. Don't even leave a toehold, never mind a foothold in your life. Amen. You and I are the only ones that give him permission to come evil against us. 
by inviting him through things that we're doing called sin. When you sin, you're saying, hey, devil, I got my front door wide open. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Come on in, honey. Because every time you and I sin, it opens up a foothold to the devil. That's why we got to shut it and say, that temptation right there in the name of Jesus, I will not do it. I have the fear of the Lord, amen. I want the fear of the Lord, and I'm going to walk in integrity, and I'm not going to sin in that area because I'm not going to invite the devil into my house. I'm not going to invite the devil into my life. I'm not going to invite the devil into my church in finances. I'm not going to invite the devil in anything at all having to do with me and my family or nothing. We got to shut the door tight and put the deadlock, the deadbolt, the Holy Spirit deadbolt on it, amen. Somebody say, Praise God. God is an awesome God, church. You know, he is just so awesome. I mean, he is to be praised, worshipped, magnified. He is to be adored. How many times we get alone with God and tell him how much you just love him? How special he is. There's no other God besides you, Lord. There's no other God besides you. Back in the Old Testament, we're learning, you know, some people back then, they, they got these little, they were worshipping these little, um, these little uh, stupid, stupid wooden images. They'd make these wooden images and they, they, they were going ahead and worshipping them. In the Bible, the psalmist said, you know, the person who actually created that wooden image is as stupid as the one who's worshiping it. <laughs> Amen? So how many of you know we got to worship God? We've got to worship nothing else. No one else. We've got to magnify his name because he is worthy. He's the only one that's worthy. There is no one else in this earth that is ever going to be worthy like the Lord. And he's the one. He, he deserves to be praised. He deserves to be honored. Amen? Praise God. I just can't understand people that live without him. I don't know what they do. They get into a crisis or a loss in their life, some death in their family. Where do they go? Where are they running to? I mean, we as Christians, we can run to the Lord and get on our knees. And he'll speak to us and he'll get us through. Amen. No matter what we go through, how many you know he is worthy? Verse 2 in the Amplified Bible, it says, For we all stumble and sin in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, he is a perfect man, fully developed in character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his own body and reign in his entire nature. That is taming his human faults and weaknesses. Verse 3. I mean, oh, that's one sentence in the Amplified. That's pretty long, isn't it? What does the Amplified do again? It's bringing out, it's amplifying what the Word of God is saying and making us understand it even better. Verse 3. Now, if we put bits into the horse's mouths and make them obey us, we guide their whole body as well. And look at the ships. Even though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a small, a very small rudder wherever the impulse of the helmsman determines. In the same sense, the tongue is a small part of the body, and it boasts of great things. See, by comparison... How great a forest is set on fire by a small spark. And the tongue is, in a sense, a fire, the very world of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life. That is the cycle of man's existence and is itself set on fire by hell or Gehenna. Verse 7. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and sea creatures is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But no one can tame the human tongue. It is a restless evil, undisciplined, unstable, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. Who, we curse men who have been in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. These things, my brothers, should not be this way, for we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God. Somebody say fear of God. Our fear of God in profound respect for his precepts. Does a spring send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? Nor can salt, produce, uh, salt water produce fresh water. Amen? So how many know, church, what we say is important? And again, what are we feeding ourselves? You know, how many know we're not, we're not products of our past? Maybe somebody is watching by live streaming or community TV. Maybe somebody here, whatever the case is. Maybe you, you suffered some kind of an abuse in the past, whatever it might be. 
and you feel that I'm not really a, a good, you know, I'm not really a strong Christian, and, and I'll never add up to anything, and, you know, my mom or dad told me that I was stupid, I never add up to anything, and I believe what they said, and I can't do anything right now. How many know you got to get rid of all that junky thoughts? you got to rebuke those in the name of Jesus. you got to say, I am a child of Almighty God. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. God loves me so much, he, he died on the cross. Jesus Christ came, and he shed his precious blood on Calvary's cross. He went through all that torture for me because he loves me that much. Amen. I am special. I am created in the image of God. I am not created in the image of a monkey. Somebody say amen to that. I am not evolved by some amoeba that happened millions of years ago. You know something, you believe that foolishness, that's even more foolish to believe. That's even more having false faith than we have faith in the Lord. We must just believe that we were created by God because that's what the Lord says. That is the truth. That is the absolute truth. Amen? And so how many know that we're created in the image of Almighty God and we are special people? And we have to say, Lord, I, I, you know, I thank you, I praise you, I magnify your name. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. You know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and be the lender, not the borrower. I thank you, Lord, that you do love me so much unconditionally. I'm the apple of your eye. I thank you, Lord God, that you think about me 24-7. You love me even more than I love myself. That's the God we serve. you got to receive that. you got to understand that. Not in your head, in your heart. What's your heart? Your mind, your, milieu, your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you've got to live according to that. You're a child of God. If the, if the devil is in one particular room, demons or whatever, when you walk in the room, here comes the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. The devil should fear when you and I walk in a room and he's there. It shouldn't be, oh, the devil's attacking me, Pastor Craig. Get away, get away, get away. No, it should be the other way around. You take the offensive, not the defensive. Amen? Somebody say, I'm special. We have to understand that. Amen? Don't let the negative thoughts come in and flood your mind and, yeah, but Pastor Craig, you don't know about my life and what I went through and all this other stuff. I don't know you're absolutely right, but I know that your Heavenly Father knows exactly what you went through. And His Word is the same. One thing that will never change is God's Word. He says, I am the Lord and I will never change. You know, we live in a society, everything's changing. People are calling good evil and, and evil good. We're living in a world that's upside down right now. But God's word is never going to change concerning a changing society that does not believe in him. He's still the same God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Hebrews 13 and verse 8. He ain't going to change. Malachi, the last book in the, New, in the Old Testament says, I am God and I change not. His word will never change to line up with our sin. His word's the same. It's going to be the same. We serve the same Lord, the same God. Amen? And how many know it's exciting to be a believer? So my challenge to you and I is this. What kind of words have we been saying? Have they been words of complaining or words of positive uh, encouragement? When we see somebody, do we see something negative in them immediately? Or do we say something good about them to try to encourage them? Do we have words of appreciation that we say on a regular basis to one another? When's the last time you told your kids you appreciated the, what they're doing in the house? You appreciate them going to school. You appreciate them and you love them unconditionally. Amen? How many know we've got to speak words of life to people, not words of death to people? Amen? So let's stand to our feet and come before the Lord in, in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we talked today about our tongue. We talked about our hearts. We talked about, Lord, that we don't want to say negative words, Lord, or, or words of gossip, words of uh, putting people down or judging others. We talked about a lot of things today, and I pray, Lord, dear Holy Spirit, that every one of us would submit to you to change our hearts for the fruit of the Holy Spirit to be developed in our life, the love. I pray for more joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and self-control. We pray, Lord God, that we focus upon you, the author and finisher of our faith. I pray that we would grow in our relationship with you, no matter what is going on in the world. And Lord, we thank you for that. Let us stay in your word every day, reading the word of God, obeying it, uh, being doers of your word, not just hearers only, deceiving ourselves. I pray for those watching by television, if they don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, that they'd receive him even now. I pray for those watching by live streaming, Lord God, for you to have your perfect way and will in their lives as well. And Lord, we thank you for that. We praise you. I pray for those who are uh, straight away from church that they start coming back to church once again to magnify your name. We thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said.
Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the Bible teaches in the Word of God, Jesus told us to remember what he went through on the cross and his flogging and everything that he went through for you and I to forgive us for our sins. And we must never forget, amen, what he did sacrifice for you and I. Amen. And, you know, we here at Changing Lives Christian Church, the first Sunday of the month, observe communion, and we take a kind of an inventory of our hearts concerning sin, concerning areas of unforgiveness, concerning areas of, um, of perhaps um, unconfessed sin. And how many know that we've got to forgive one another, amen? We've got to walk in a heart of always, always saying, Lord, I am willing to forgive no matter who offends me, no matter what the situation is. We also have to focus on unconfessed sin, saying, Lord, I want to live according to your word. I want to live a holy life, amen? I want to live a life that, you, that is pleasing to you. The Apostle Paul, speaking to, you know, writing his first letter to the church in Corinth in uh, chapter 11, verses 23 to 33 in the message version of the Bible, explains what communion is. And I just want to read that once again. It says, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I receive my instructions from the Master himself and pass them on to you. The Master, Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the master. You, must, you will be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. How many are looking forward to the master returning? Amen. I sure am. Hallelujah. Amen. You must never let familiarity breed contempt. Anyone who eats this bread or drinks the cup of the master reverently is like part of the crowd that jeered and spit on him at his death. Is that the kind of, quote, remembrance you want to be a part of? Examine your motives. Test your heart. Come to this meal in holy awe. If you give no thought or worse, don't care about the broken body of the master when you eat and drink, you're running the risk of serious consequences. That's why so many of you now are listless and sick and others have gone to an early grave. If we get this straight now, we won't have to be straightened out later on. Better to be confronted by the master now than to face a fiery confrontation later. So my friends, when you come together to the Lord's table, be reverent and courteous with one another. So in a nutshell, what is communion, Pastor Craig? Well, number one, it's a time of remembrance. Secondly, it's a time of repentance. And thirdly, it's a time of renewal. Amen. So once again, I want to ask you a question. Do you have any unforgiven, uh, do you have any people in your life that perhaps have offended you and you've never forgiven them? Maybe they've even passed away years ago. They did something to you or said something, whatever the case might be, and you've never forgiven them. How many you know now is a good time to say, Lord, I give them to you. I forgive them in the name of Jesus. Amen. What about the other area of unconfessed sin? Are we living, doing certain things in our life that is not pleasing to the Lord? Perhaps we're, 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 we're not doing something we should be doing, like reading the Word of God every day and praying every day and being used to the Lord that we should be doing. So that's something between you and the Lord. Amen. But this is a good time to really talk to the Lord. So let us stand to our feet, if you would, and let's take a moment of silence. And just ask the Lord and speak to him through our spirit, amen, concerning these areas. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. If we all could take the, um, the bread at this time, and Sister Agnes is going to read the scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. 
Lord God, we just want to thank you that we can time in the, come to you in this time of remembrance, this time of communion, and we remember how your body was bruised and battered even beyond recognition, Lord. If people saw you in the street, they would not even have known that Christ Jesus, you are Christ because of the extreme uh, beating and tearing of your body. It was broken so that we may be made whole, Lord God. You even looked at your body and you could see the bones, Lord God. We want to thank you for the crown on your head. We want to thank you for those nails pierced hands. We want to thank you for the piercing of your feet, Lord God, and the side and the gushing of water mingled with blood, Lord God. We want to thank you of how you hung on the cross and even said to Abba, Father, why have you forsaken me? And even having said that, Christ Jesus, you said you'll never leave us, nor forsake us, but you experience being forsaken by the Father on the cross, Lord God. So we just want to thank you that we can come in communion, remembering all these things, remembering when you're in the garden, Lord God, and you're kneeling, tears, Lord God, a sweating blood, and ca calling up to our Father and say, if there's any other way, but your will be done, and thank you for taking the weight of the world upon your shoulder, and even right now, we are redeemed because of the blood, because of your body that was bruised, and even right now, we pray that you bless this time, Lord God, and as you overtake of your body, even right now, we pray, Lord God, and we are receiving a healing virtue, may it flow even right now from the crown of our head to the bottom of our feet, Lord Lord God, yes. cleanse and heal everything that we know that mm -hmm. is wrong in our body, all the things that we don't know, whether it's mental, physical, psychological, spiritual, emotional, Father God, we are receiving mm -hmm. this healing, Lord God, and declaring that we are believing, Lord God, even this moment, that by your broken body, we are healed. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's partake. Thank you, Jesus. Let us take cup in hand at this time. The Bible says, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Amen. I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Father, we thank you, Lord, for sending your very, very best your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and shed his very precious blood. We thank you, Lord, that even today we sing hymns about the blood. Amen. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that we can focus on your shed blood because you shed it. Every drop said, I love you. I love you, and I love you. And so, Lord, we thank you for the blood. I pray, Lord, as we continue to remember you, Lord, that you bless as we partake at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake at this time, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 10, 16 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that today as we partook in communion of the blessed cup and bread, we partook in the blessing of Jesus Christ's broken body, the covenant in his blood and the finished work of the cross. Thank you that you bless us because of what Christ Jesus did. We can declare we are the redeemed of the Lord and the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you that we can walk in this blessed assurance. Amen. For as you, Christ Jesus, are in the Father, so we are in you and you in us. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Hi, everybody. My name is Pastor Craig Matheson. I'm the pastor of Changing Lives Christian Church here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And I just want to do this short video concerning basically what we do here in the ministry, what our outreach ministries are, and basically how our services are conducted, our Bible studies, and all kinds of wonderful things that are going on. I know some of you have written in and asked me, you know, what is the format of your service? How long is your service? Um, what other ministries do you have in the church? Um, you know, in all these different things I just want to talk about today. But I want to open up with the word of Scripture, which is, which is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, in verses 18 through 20. Jesus told us, and this is referred to as the Great Commission, he says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
He says to teach these new disciples to obey all commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, the heartbeat of Changing Lives Christian Church is to get the good news out, to evangelize, to get the gospel out, to share this wonderful gospel message with the entire world. The Bible says, for God so loved the world <clears throat> that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we want to make that invitation known as, as, as God's servants, as his messengers, as his church. We want to go ahead and share this word with the entire world. And I just want to let you know what we're doing here in the ministry of Changing Lives Christian Church. So you have a good basis. Some of you watch us, I'm sure, on uh, community television every week. Some of you are watching our YouTube videos as well. So we just want to kind of, you know, give you a heads up and explain what our church ministry is about. The first thing is this, that we are a born-again evangelical Christian church. So evangelical means we evangelize, we try to get the Word of God out in, 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 in all different ways. Um, you know, basically we're born again. Jesus says you must be born again, um, you know, and so forth. We're born again, again Christians. Our Sunday worship service is at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. And um, if you want to get here early, you can. We're, we're, the church is open as early as 10 o'clock in the morning. We have some coffee and pastries in the, before the service begins. We have a small team of people that are praying around quarter of 11 in the church right now to prepare for the service and all. If you want to participate in that, if not, that's okay as well. Our service starts promptly at 11 o'clock. Now, basically, we open up in a word of prayer. Then after we pray, we, we go ahead and we do four YouTube worship songs. We have two big screens in the front of the church. And when the YouTube songs are playing, you can sing along because all the lyrics are right up there on those screens. Now we're blessed because every other week we have a live worship team of five men that come in and bless us, uh, you know, singing four different songs, contemporary Christian music, and, uh, you know, it's kind of upbeat, which is great. We get into the praise and worship and just to magnify the Lord. After the worship, uh, after the song service is done in our service, what we do is this. I take up the offering, make a few announcements, then I get right into the Word of God. The total amount of time from beginning to end is about one hour. Probably from 11 to 12 o'clock if you want to, you know, if you're thinking how long is your service. Because I know different churches have different, um, you know, different lengths of time as far as the service goes. Now, we also live stream all of our church services on Sunday morning. We have two Facebook platforms, Changing Lives Christian Church Facebook platform, and also uh, my own personal Craig S. Matheson uh, Facebook platform as well. So we live stream to those two platforms in Facebook. And we have a YouTube channel. Changing Lives Christian Church has a YouTube channel. And so on a typical Sunday morning, if you are a subscriber to our uh, YouTube channel, you're automatically going to see our services. If, you're a, if you uh, are on our Facebook page or with one of our friends and so forth, then you'll see that automatically as well. So that's kind of neat that we can do that. Now, we're, <laughs> we're literally live streaming to Africa, to the UK, to Kenya, to Uganda, to many, many, many parts of the world. Um, and many people write in and they tell us, I'm watching from Uganda, I'm watching from Africa, I'm watching from the UK, etc. So it's really awesome that we can do that. You know, we're not a lot of people in our church. We may be about 40 people in all, maybe 50 on a good Sunday morning. However, we're getting the gospel out beyond these four walls in the church. And that's what really, really counts. And so besides that, believe it or not, we're on 11 different community television stations right now. So every week... Our services are shown on 11 different community television uh, stations covering the entire Merrimack Valley. So it's really neat. You know, we're on, we're on all different, di different towns and so forth, so hopefully you can turn it on community television as well and see us preaching there. The last Sunday of every month, right after the worship service is concluded, we have a wonderful fellowship hall here at the church, and what we do is we, we ask people to bring a covered dish, and we go ahead and we, um, we get together, and we uh, have a nice fellowship dinner together at the church. So it's really, really neat to get to know each other much better. The other thing, too, I want to mention is we have our Bible study midweek. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have an open discussion Bible study. There's a small group of us that meet upstairs here in my office. And basically what we do is right now, in fact, we're going through the book of Psalms, verse by verse. And um, so if you want to participate in that, feel free to. It's open discussion. Do you have any questions about the Bible? That's fine. If you need a Bible, come to our Bible study. We'll give you a free Bible. You know, we want to really, really help you in your relationship with God. Amen. And also, um, we have a love outreach ministry, which started just about maybe seven months ago. It's awesome. 
We have free movie nights every single month here at the church. They're usually on Saturday nights um, and so forth, and, and basically they're, they're free. Anybody can come in. We get some nice gourmet popcorn. We get coffee. We get tea. Uh, we even have a raffle with, with some gift baskets that are donated to us that the members here at the church make, and we have a wonderful raffle as well. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's good Christian fun. Evangelical movie. We give away free literature, free books, and things like that on that movie night, and it's a love outreach. It's in order to not just invite our church members here, but to invite everybody, even people that aren't part of our church to the church. So that's really, really important. We also do cookouts in the summertime with the Love Outreach Ministry. You know, we have, we set up a bunch of tables in the front of our church building and we invite the neighbors, we invite the homeless, we invite anybody at all who wants to have a bite to eat with us and to share the gospel with them as we're sharing the food and so forth. So that's really great and it works out really well. Once a month, it's so awesome. The first Saturday of every month, we have the privilege, I have the privilege of doing a, a radio program all the way in Uganda. That's right, I said Uganda. It's called Grace Radio 92.6 FM in Uganda. What happens is I sit at my desk in my office, I prepare a teaching ahead of time, and I, I am, I'm you know, on Zoom, and there's another individual that is interpreting for me right at the radio station of everything I'm saying. And um, the first half hour is the teaching. The next half hour uh, is people calling in and, and they have prayer requests. We pray for them. You should see the testimonies going on there. People are getting saved. People are being delivered from witchcraft. People are, are getting born again. People are, you know, it's just awesome what's going on. And we thank God for that ministry that we, that we are a part of. We have another ministry here at the church called Healing Heart Ministry. Now the Healing Heart Ministry is giving to orphans and widows giving money to orphans and widows. And that is through the Samaritan's Purse Ministry and also through Covenant House Ministries. So that's really a blessing. Besides that healing, besides those two uh, ministries giving to them to help those individuals, we also are taking up offerings. We're taking up money in order to give to the poor children in Uganda. These poor kids live on the street. They don't even have a home to go to. And so we feel really bad. We have people up there that we know, the same individual that ter interprets for us in the radio program. She's a wonderful woman of God, and she goes ahead and takes this money, makes as much food as possible with the money, and, and, and has, a, has a bunch of children show up, sometimes 100, 200 kids, whatever amount of food they have that they can give them a really hearty good meal. So we really have a heart for kids. We want to go out and reach out to them as well through that Healing Heart Ministry. We also have a food pantry here. You know, if you need free groceries, Feel free to come every Sunday morning from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. We have a free food, a, a food pantry. So come on and pick up some free groceries if you'd like. Uh, nothing to be embarrassed about if you're, if you're running a little low. I know the cost of living is very high right now and so forth. So we want to give, we want to reach out to people with our, with our church and give them some free groceries as well. I also have a counseling ministry here. I counsel people, of course, in the church as well as outside the church as well called Christian Counseling in Haverhill. And so that really works out great. So I just want to encourage you to get a little more information about our church. I want to keep on airing this for, for a while on community TV, just so you have a good idea of what Changing Lives Christian Church is about. Maybe many of you watch the program every week, but you're not quite sure what goes on in the background and what we do. And so we're doing all these things in the name of the Lord, and we're really blessed to do these things. I just want to encourage you to like us on Facebook, Changing Lives Christian Church on Facebook. Just hit the like, and, uh, and also subscribe, and also push the notification bell on our YouTube channel. And every single time that we post a new video, you're going to be notified that that new video is on there and you can watch it. So I hope to see you this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. Hope to meet you and uh, may God bless you and have a fantastic day.